Okay, hello everybody and welcome to Kennel Lane School's transition event, a bit different this year. Usually we have our next steps event where we invite all the colleges and local provisions into our hall and parents can come and ask some questions. This year obviously things are slightly different so we're moving online so please can you bear with me if there are any um, problems. Um, but hopefully everything will run smoothly. I've got lots of people here today to have a chat about what they are offering our young people once they move on from Kennel Lane School. And this will also be recorded and put up on our YouTube channel for um, referral to afterwards. Um, so my name is Vicky and I am head of sixth form here at Kennel Lane School. My email address has been put on the letter. Um, if you have any questions about transition and what's available for our young people once they leave, please do not hesitate to contact me. Um, I'm going to pass over to Christina Skipper, who is the transition officer of Bracknell Forest now. And I am going to send her live. There we go, Christina. Hello, my name's Christina and I am effectively a careers advisor for young people with EHCPs. Um, so I will work with yourselves and your young person and have the capacity to work with them till they're 25 if they need my support. Ordinarily, I would have gone and met your young person and spoken to yourselves um, in year 11 at Kennel Lane and also in year 13. However, during this current time, I've not had the opportunity to do that. But uh, Vicky has passed on my contact details. I've spoken to a couple of you already. But if you need my help with looking at post 18, post 16, post 18 options, please contact me. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much, Christina. Um, so, yeah, just to reiterate, Christina works for Bracknell Forest Learners. So um, please make sure if um, your young person is under the Bracknell Forest Local Authority that she uh, that you contact her um, if you need her support. I'm going to pass over now to Sam Box, who is from Bracknell Forest Adult Social Care. I'm going to send you live now, Sam. There you go. Hi everybody, my name's Sam and I work at, in the Approaching Adulthood team within Adult Social Care at Bracknell Forest Council and, and what we do is we track all young people with an EHCP from the age of 14 so we know who's going to be um, potentially needing support from us. Um, alongside that we will start getting to know people at around age 16 or 17. We come along to your school reviews um, and we start collecting lots of information to see if you would be eligible for support once you turn 18. If you do have adult social care um, needs, then, then we would start working with you to create a support plan to make sure everything's in place for when you turn 18. So, a bit like Christina, we, we try and get to know people early on, but um, in the current climate, it, it has been very difficult. But we will be popping up at reviews um, and um, Vicky has all our contact details if you need to give us a call and have a chat and talk about some ideas of um, what your plans are for when you turn 18. So thank you. Ooh. Lovely. Thank you, Sam. Um, and we have just got, hopefully, appearing um, Sandra from Bracknell and Wokenham. I'm afraid I won't be appearing, Victoria. I haven't got camera. Oh no, where are you? <laughs> oh no, I can't. I can't click on you, Sandra. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I can hear her, but I cannot see her to click on her. I'm up the top on mine. It says SW. I can't see her. Um, right. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how to how to put Sandra on and skip to Karen from um, Breakthrough Supported Employment to tell us a bit about what she does while I figure out how to get Sandra on. Thank you, Karen. Hi. Oh, Hi. hang on, hang on, hang on, Karen. Oh. Why can't I click on you? There we go. Send live. Oh. 
technical issues. Right, I'm having issues with sending Karen live as well. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, sorry Karen, I'm going to skip okay. to Sue. There we go, I can send Sue live if that's okay. Sue is from Reading College, so she is the Wokenham and Reading local offer. So I'm going to send Sue live now. There you go, Sue, you're live. Sue, you're on mute. Can you unmute yourself, please? Hi, I am Sue Edwards, um, lecturer at Reading College. Um, I'm going to talk to you about uh, most of our courses and then my colleague Sean will speak to you about our PMLD provision, which we call Tier 1 um, after I finish. So uh, we have a very big department at Reading College. It deals with people who have EHCPs. Um, we have Tier 2 learners who are moving towards uh, the community or towards some form of sheltered employment and they uh, do a course called Skills for Living, uh, which is initially a two year course. Most of them stay on for a third year and then there's further provision after that. So English and Maths is the core subject there and then they're given it chances to explore the community, um, do cookery, do creative arts, um, self-advocacy, understand the world of work, um, have some limited work experience and they're in college for four days a week. Uh, which gives them the chance on the fifth day to go and do something in within the community. And then <clears throat> our tier three provision, uh, which we call work preparation, which is a very descriptive title of exactly what it is. Three days a week in college, two days a week on work experience. So that is a, a proper five day a week full time course although we don't tend to send the students out on work experience as soon as they get to us. We give them a bit of a chance to <clears throat> settle into college. And they, again, maths and English, wellness, ICT, drama, art, photography, ceramics, sport, construction, all sorts of different things are offered each year. Um, but the emphasis is on very much is on employment. So that, again, is a two year course with a follow on third year called STEPS, which is extending their maths and English levels so they can move on to mainstream courses or into employment. And then perhaps the most innovative thing that we do at Reading College are our learning companies. So we have an internship at the Royal Barks Hospital called Route to Recruit, where students work there for a full year, full time. Uh, doing a rotation between three different wards or catering or portering. Um, but that's not something that they'll do until they've done a course with us at the college. Um, then our students run the library at Palmer Park in East Reading. Uh, they run the post room at the college, not help to run the post room, they run the post room. They run the cafe, they run the shop, they get all the stock in, they do stock rotation, they work on the till. It's really fantastic experience. Um, it sort of underpins everything we do, this development of social skills and then the route into employment. Following on from that, we do have adult provision, but obviously that's for students who are older. Um, as somebody said at the beginning, with an EHCP, the students uh, will be supported up until the age of 25. So there's plenty of scope for moving on to other things. Um, the department has had an outstanding Ofsted in the last two inspections, and um, it's a great, jolly, friendly, fun place to be. It's brilliant. Thank you very much. Vicky, I think your mic is uh, on mute. 
sorry. Thank you very much, Sue, from, from Reading. I'm having some um, issues getting um, Karen and Sandra on. So I'm going to pass over to Sean, who is from our house, um, Reading College's PMLD provision. So I'm going to queue you up and I'm going to send you live, Sean, now. Okay. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name's Sean. I'm the senior learning support assistant for our Our House course, which is our PMLD course. Um, we fall under Reading College, so I do work alongside Sue, but instead of being on the main campus, um, we're actually based off site in Wokingham. Um, I have actually got a little presentation. I'm going to see if I can load it up. Hopefully, we can see that. Yeah, can, can Vicky, can you give me a thumb up? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we're based off site in Wokingham, as I said. We run Monday to Thursday, uh, 9.30 to 3 each day. Um, and the learners access two to four days a week, kind of depending on their level. And this is usually alongside an adult social care package. And it works quite nicely um, because they stay with us for two years. And then usually that social care package kind of extends um, to five days a week once they leave us. Uh, we have six learners in each day and every learner has a one to one. So uh, it's a heavily supported course. Just a few little pictures, as you can see, we are an open plan building. Um, we've got a nice sensory room and a little soft play area. Um, yep. In terms of curriculum, so we do specialise in profound and complex disabilities. Um, and we're building and maintaining independent, independent life skills. Uh, we do lessons such as cooking, our attention autism, PSHE, community, the music man. We do go to hydrotherapy and rebound therapy. Obviously, it's looking slightly different at the moment because of COVID, but fingers crossed we'll be able to go back very soon. Um, and we do spend a lot of time off site out in the community, reinforcing independent skills. So going to cafes, going shopping, uh, students start using money skills and things like that. Um, and in terms of applying, we don't really have like application forms. We've got strong links with school, so we've got quite a good relationship with Vicky. She knows us. She knows what kind of students um, are going to be good for us. She lets us know. Myself and the course leader, Donna Hopkins, I have to put our emails and, and numbers down there for you to note down if you want. Um, we'll go to the school, assess them, see if we can think, uh, see if we think we can meet their needs um, and go from there. It's not first come first serve. We're a very, very small uh, group. So we kind of have to look at all the applications that come through, um, all the potential students and uh, kind of look at our cohort and see who we think is best going to be fit. Um, or uh, if Vicky hasn't passed uh, the student name over to us, then feel free to email myself or Donna if you think uh, this will be right for your young person and um, we can arrange a visit. I think that's everything. Oh. Yeah, thanks guys. Thank you so much, Sean. Um, again, our house is our um, is the PMLD provision locally. So usually those learners from the Woodlands Hub would feed into um, Sean Sean and Donna's provision and so we work really really closely with them through Sammy and Sheena and Marilise um, to make sure that that's the right provision and if you feel that that's the right provision for your young person please get in touch through Marilise um, and we can look at setting up an observation. I'm now going to pass back to Karen. Karen Scott is from Breakthrough which is a supported employment provision. Um, and I think I can send her live now. So I'm going to send you live, Karen, now. Thank you very much. Off you go. <laughs> Oh, right, that really threw me. Hi, my name's Karen Scott. Um, I, I'm the team leader for Breakthrough Supported Employment. Um, we're a service that supports people to, to get work. 
Um, so we, we help in all aspects of, of getting work, anything from identifying what somebody wants to do, looking at their, their interests and their career aspirations, um, to, to looking for work experience placements, volunteering placements is a stepping stone. Ultimate gain, gain is to, to go into paid employment, um, but there are little steps that we need to get to in order to, 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 to get to that. So anything to do with, with get, getting, getting work really, um, applying for work, contacting employers, um, interview support, interview preparation. And our main thing is once somebody is successful in, in getting work, we'll support somebody in the workplace. Um, so, so we help somebody to learn the tasks, learn the skills, um, and then gradually withdraw. So we offer support to the young person and, and to the employer. Um, we look at reasonable adjustments, all that sort of stuff. So anything to do with, with getting work. Um, we, we help with job centre appointments. Um, so, so yeah, anything to do with getting work. We work closely with Christina, um, Christina Skipper, um, and referrals will come through the adult social care team, which would be Sam. Um, so yeah, anything to do with, with getting work and having a bit of support in order to maintain, maintain employment. So yeah, that's us, thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much, Karen. I got there in the end. Um, so Karen, again, she can be she can also support with any part time work that's referred through social um, adult social care as well. Is that right, Karen? Yes, it is. It, it's very much dependent on what, what the person wants to do and where, where they're at with something. So it could be part time work. It could be um, it could be full time work. Some people, their aspirations is, is volunteering and that that's where we get to is volunteering. Um, um, but obviously our, our ultimate aim is to get somebody into paid work. At the moment we've, we've got people for example working at Legoland, um, we, we've got some people working in shops, some offices, so, so it's quite varied dependent on where somebody wants to go. Um, we are, because of Covid, we, we are changing the way that we, we're doing stuff, um, so, so, so we are we are doing quite a few community projects and, and working on communication, team building and that sort of stuff. So it is it is changing to meet the needs of how we are at the moment. But yeah, full time, pay time work, whatever, whatever somebody is able to do and wanting to do. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you so much, Karen. Um, I'm having some problems with um, being able to show you Sandra, um, who's kindly logged on from Bracknell Wokingham College, which is obviously the local offer for Bracknell learners. So I'm going to pass over to Christina Skipper, who is just going to share some information about the course offered at Bracknell. Thank you, Christina, you're live. Hi, everyone again. I'm just going to share with you the foundation leaflet that can be found on the Activate Colleges website. This is equivalent for Bracknell and Wokingham, uh, Bracknell Wokingham and Reading College, and I can just quickly talk you through it. OK, so this is the range of supported learning courses available at Bracknell and Wakingham and at Reading. Like Reading College, Bracknell and Wakingham offer tiers of tier two, three and four. What they do not offer is the PMLD courses, which is only available through our house. So this leaflet goes through the different tiers and what the expectations are and what the study is needed on them. In comparison to Reading College, I would say Bracknell and Wakingham College as a whole is smaller. Um, it does have a, um, a special area for young people with additional needs who do their tier courses. There's a separate entrance as well if a young person has anxiety about going through the whirly doors at the college. Um, and there's a separate entrance and there's a separate area which is only uh, suitable, well, which is only available for young people on their pass. So not all students can access uh, the area for the foundation group. So generally, the majority of students would be assessed by Sandra and her team and will be put into the appropriate tiers, uh, depending on what their skill sets are, what they'd like to do. So they could start off in tier two. Um, so I'll go straight down to tier two because that's the lowest level that Bracknell and Wakingham College offer. And from that, they can then move through the tiers or move through up into uh, up into further education mainstream courses. Um, so, for example, if I go through a timetable, all the classes are four days a week, 
so they usually have a day off in the week. The tier through tier two courses consist of maths and English, wellness, enrichment, fitness, communication skills and music for this year. In tier three, you will, the student would carry on, continue stu studying maths and English, but they'll also, also have the opportunity to try different vocational tasters. So this means they could try different areas within the college. Uh, this year, I think they're doing things like sport, health and safety, so health and social care, sorry, catering, media and IT. And they would uh, do tasters in that. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Oh, they don't have the tier. So the tier four is very similar to the tier three, except they would actually do the vocational areas um, in different vocational areas to get an idea of what they do. Um, the college courses can be uh, bespoke to a student. So if a student has a particular interest in, for example, media, they can try courses in the media. And again, they'd be put into maths and English classes relevant to the level of study they need. So if they're doing GCSE, they'll be put in with GCSE students, or if they're doing functional skills, they'll be put in with functional skills students at the appropriate level. So following on for that, in addition, this page tells you about the ADA, um, sorry, autism service that's available at both Reading and Bratton and Wakingham Colleges. This is on top of any support that might be needed. So they, adults, the autism service, it can provide a bespoke program for any young person who struggles with anxiety and has real severe anxiety on thinking about going into a mainstream FE college. So I can work with the uh, autism team at the college to do a bespoke transition program, or they can offer additional support within the college setting. The only difference between Bracknell and Wokingham and Reading is the Bracknell autism team is actually within the college. It's on floor five and they have a room, whereas for Reading College, they are on a separate building, but on the same site as a college site to offer the autism service. But the aim of the autism service is for integration of a young person into either the foundation or a mainstream course. Following the tier programmes and following potentially a mainstream course, a student could be considered to go on to a supported internship. Effectively, a supported internship is seen as a last year of education where the aim of that person, young person, is to gain employment. This is achieved through doing a work placement uh, through it Bracknell. It's working with Optalis, uh, the employment team, uh, to find a employment in a sector that a young person wants. So this will be working in a sector, undertaking travel training, um, developing the work skills uh, to ultimately have paid employment at the end. This is again like the one at Reading. This is not offered as a first year. This will be offered to students where it is seen that they have an aim of employment as their goal and if they're able to meet certain criteria such as having the opportunity wanting to work but also wanting to learn and develop travel training skills. But this brochure can be found on the uh, Bracknell College website. Um, at the moment the college has open days where it's virtual. However, I know Bracknell and Wakingham College are offering bespoke visits to young people and their parents. If you email me, I will organise that with Sandra and her team at the college. Um, I can't remember the days off the top of my head. I think it's a Friday afternoon, Wednesday afternoon and maybe a Tuesday, but they are very flexible on that. So if you get in contact with myself or Sandra, um, I'm happy to set that up. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you, Christina. Thanks so much. Um, just also a quick note to say that um, we have tried to align our curriculum at Kennel Lane School as much as possible with the vocational pathways offered at Bracknell and Wokingham um, so that learners have a really good understanding of what they can follow through those tiers um, just, um, you know, to feed on through as we are a Bracknell school. But we also understand that we have 
lots of learners from different local authorities. And so I'm now going to pass to Mary Campbell, who is from Farnborough, um, FCOT, Farnborough College of Technology, um, who would be our local offer for our Hampshire learners. So I'm going to send you live now, Mary, if you could take that off mute. Thank you. Hi, Vicky, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Vicky. Thank you. Um, yeah, as Vicky said, I'm from FCOT, Farnborough College of Technology, and we do provide the local offer for those Hampshire students at Kennan Lane and other schools. Um, we are a general FE college with um, a foundation and entry level department, which is our provision for students with additional needs and EHCPs. Um, we offer a range of study programmes, starting from our focus on life skills, which tends to be for young people um, from 18 to 21. Although um, in recent years we are having more young people who come straight to us at 16 for that course. The focus on life skills is um, primarily about aiming to uh, give those young people more independent skills. And unlike a lot of the other offers that um, have been talked about here today, we do cooking, shopping, um, we have a small business that we run in the college that our students are responsible for. Um, we've set up a small learning company. Um, in that embedded, they do their English and maths, digital skills um, and a lot of the practical transferable skills. Um, we're very lucky in that we're close to Farnborough town, so that gives the students the opportunity to be able to with staff um, go into town, do shopping and sort of practice those real life skills um, as well as some travel training. Um, the next course we have is our Pathways to Independence and on both Focus and Life and Pathways, we, we have um, they're primarily the two courses that I guess students from Kennan Lane have traditionally come to us. Um, so the Pathways to Independence is generally for 16 to 18 year olds and um, the cohort of students on that come from schools like Kennan Lane, our local school, Sam Cody, Car Warden um, and the Abbey School and Farnham, schools like that, young people with a moderate learning difficulty. Um, again, they will all take uh, English maths and digital skills, but within the, uh, the pathway skills, there is a focus on uh, vocational options. So in year one, they will have the opportunity one day a week to partake in a vocational um, day and that will be with one of our other um, areas in the college like construction or drama or art or perhaps uh, sport and public services. In year two, the offer will be that they will have one day a week that is solely focused on vocational options and that would be an accredited um, offering that would be part of their course. So it could be catering, hospitality. There's about uh, a choice of six offerings. Um, that is a two year course. Both the Focus on Life Skills and the Pathways are two year courses. Um, we have then a vocational introduction to college, which uh, offers a programme for those young people who are perhaps a little bit more independent. They just need one year in college. And traditionally, those young people would move on to a level one course after they finish on vocational uh, introduction to college. We also offer um, a supported internship. We offer two supported internships, which we've set up in the last few years. One of them is generally, um, as was mentioned earlier, that probably would be the last year in college. And the aim and the outcome of that is to get our young people into employment. Um, and that tends to be for the young people who've completed pathways or focus on life skills. It's a one year course and we have one term in college from September to December and then the following two terms, the young people are in college Mondays and Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, they're in their work placements and that continues until the end of June. Um, the second supported internship is for uh, those young people who've perhaps come through foundation or maybe gone straight on to uh, the mainstream college and they've done a level one or a level two and they still perhaps need academically they've done very well but perhaps they need just a little bit of support to get into the workplace so we have this is our second year of offering uh, that sort of supported internship courses so slightly slightly higher level um, so we are a, we are a general FE college we're quite an open college 
um, and we do have the foundation to pop and most of our classes tend to be in uh, one particular area, but our ethos is very much on enabling our young people to become more independent, you know, to use all the general facilities, lots of support to use the main refectory. Um, when they set up the uh, the work skills and that, they, they, they move all around the college, they visit, they, they actually become probably, they know the college better than some of our staff because they, they do such a good job of getting to know uh, every department. So it, it really is, we do encourage them to use all areas of the college and become very much part of the, the mainstream colleges there as well as any other department. Um, so their courses generally are four days a week. Um, all our courses, all our full time courses are four days a week. Wednesday afternoon uh, is the enrichment programme again, which they integrate with all of the college. So, uh, you know, they can choose to do football or they can choose to do pottery. And again, that will be across the college with support from uh, our staff and our department. So, yeah, a four day a week full time college course and Obviously, as the name, we're, we are in Farnborough, so we're a little bit more removed from Kenna Lane, but we have got some open evenings, virtual ones at the moment. Um, there was one last month and I think there's another one coming soon. But again, we are hoping perhaps after Christmas, if you give, would like to give me a call or perhaps Victoria would give you my number to arrange um, for some young people to come in and visit because obviously it's quite important to get a feel for your surroundings. So we're hoping to maybe offer um, some on-site visits and chats with parents. Thank you. Lovely, thank you so much, Mary. Um, we've reached the end of um, all our guests. Thank you everyone for taking the time to log on this afternoon and we will save this recording so it is available on our YouTube channel. Um, in terms of transitioning on from Kennel Lane, as has been mentioned, there isn't really a set deadline for our learners to apply to their next steps. However, in order to support with their numbers as soon as possible, if they are if they know that they are in their last year of education at Kennel Lane School is preferable. So this could be, for example, if they know that they don't want to continue in sixth form with us, they would apply around sort of Christmas time of year 11 or if they didn't want um, to continue at any point through our sixth form then it would be about Christmas time of their last year. Um, in terms of transport through the local, um, in terms of transport through the local authority, um, the local authority will transport um, learners through usually subsidised transportation um, like the R bus in Bracknell Forest, which is £1 a journey to the local offer, um, which is why most of our learners who are from Bracknell Forest end up going to Bracknell and Wokenham, Wokenham learners to either Reading um, or Bracknell and Wokenham and Hampshire learners to Farnborough. Um, but obviously, um, if transportation isn't an issue, then um, you, you could choose um, other way, other places as well. And Christina wanted me to mention phase transfer for year 14, but I might pass over to Christina for that. <laughs> um, Can I just mention transport as well, please? Um, farm, uh, hopefully next year, uh, there is a coach that's going to go to Farnborough College from Bracknell. It's a private company. Yes. Oh, lovely. <laughs> um, so similar to another college, Bar Berkshire College of Agriculture, they're going to set up a tab bus um, that's going to go from bus, Bracknell bus station, stop at Ascot, and then go on to Farnborough. So I am keeping an eye on that. Um, so if there are students, which will help a lot of our students to get to Farnborough, because the main problem in Farnborough is accessibility from Bracknell, because there's no direct route. Um, so yeah, if any parents are involved, as far as the transport, it's for Bracknell Forest anyway, for post-16 transport, and I think this is standard across all boroughs. Uh, post-16 transport is uh, offered if it's needed. It's not a automatic entitlement and it's to the nearest college that is a suitable setting. Now that's irrespective of any course a student wants to do. So for example, um, if they want to do, I know that Bratton and Wakingham don't do performing arts. 
So if they want to do performing arts, it would be Farnborough, it would be Reading, or it would be Berkshire College of Agriculture. But if Bracknell Wokingham are a suitable setting, that young person will not get transport, education transport to another setting. It'll be something that they would have to do travel training, catch a bus, catch a train, and I can talk to parents about that. Um, and so, yeah, we can work on that to do um, explain to the parents that they do need to do travel training. Um, as far as the face transfer, I just wanted to mention on behalf of the SCN team that young people from Bratnell Forest in year 14 would have got a letter for the parents asking for parental preference and that needs to be returned by the 15th of December so that the Bratnell Forest SCN team can then start doing their consultations with whoever their parental preference is. Um, but just by naming one thing does not mean stop you and your young people going to visit all the other colleges. This is purely for parental preference. Thanks. A Thank you so much, Christina. Um, we are, oh, hang on, it's having issues. We're going to leave it there. Thank you so much. And um, I am going to save this and put onto our YouTube channel. Um, thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon and hopefully it's been a really, really informative time for parents um, and all of the contact details of everybody who's spoken this afternoon are available on our letter and I'll make sure that they are also on our website. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and I hope you have a lovely Christmas. Thank you. Thanks everybody, hopefully that's ended.